they say thank you for spending your uh, spring break with us <laughs> this week. A lot of folks on spring break this week and missing a lot of our kids this week. But that's okay. It's okay to go off once in a while. Amen? You need to. So thank you for being here tonight. Uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer at this time. Father, thank you for this Wednesday night, time of instructions and the time of hearing uh, from the Word of God that will help us. Father, we're praying uh, for many people right now. We're asking you, Lord, just to deliver them if they're not saved. We're praying for those that are in the hospital. Lord, it's not feeling well. We ask you, Lord, for those that are going through uh, this early springtime uh, problems uh, with the pollen. We ask you, Lord, to touch those as well as myself. And, Father, as always, we thank you for your sweet Holy Spirit, the spirit of conviction. Uh, Lord, that we may be guided and prepared by the Holy Spirit. Praying for upcoming revival uh, this Sunday night. We pray, Father, for the Phillips family. We ask you, Lord, for next week for Brother uh, Bullock, uh, Brother Austin. Lord, to use him to speak to our hearts. And, Father, as we look into your word tonight concerning revival, uh, may we have an open heart and open mind to hear in Christ's name. Amen and amen. Two ninety five, page two ninety five. I will sing the wondrous story. Let's see. Here we go. Sing the wondrous story of the Christ who died for me. y'all have a rest now and then I'm gonna try to sing one I found my words that's why I went running back I was glad Mick prayed long enough for me to go find them words so he did good cleaning that room too Jenny. let's see if I can find it in here technical my technical support ain't doing too good for me now hang on a minute I am so sorry somebody need to testify tell me something good that's happened to you this week ain't nobody had nothing good this week <laughs> what's wrong with y'all what's wrong with y'all we woke up this morning <laughs> Amen. thank the Lord for y'all waking Lord. up well I'm gonna have to sing it a cappella if I don't find it right here now Lord, I've got always to work praise the Lord for his grace amen Okay. As far as mercy, I've, over the last three or four weeks, I've been in a lot of places, talked to a lot of people who don't have the Lord Jesus Christ. And often when I leave a home, I often think, Lord, if they just really knew. Yeah. If they just really knew, if they would just invite you. A lot of things in this old world is not going to change, but the one thing will change is their destination. Amen. Aren't you glad tonight, Brother Jerry, your destination has been changed? Amen. Yeah. Amen, that you know that your testimony has been changed as well That's right. because of Christ. So let's worship the Lord tonight.
tree where no twilight shadows deepen. Unending day where night will never be. A city where no storm clouds ever gather. Oh, this is just what heaven What will it be when we get over yonder and join the throng around the glassy sea? We'll join our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven. other loves all flee and when they crown him lord of all i'll be there oh this is just what heaven means to me what will it be when we get over yonder Join the throng around the glassy sea. We'll join our loved ones and crown Christ forever. Oh, this is just what heaven. tell you about that song thank y'all that song right there I mean I found it and it's a lower key and it's hard for me to sing it but I was determined that I was gonna sing it my daddy I could hear my daddy sing that and honey he could let the the, the rafters be when he got that you know when he gets hits that chorus what will it be when I get over yonder I mean he could let it roar honey you know he's a redhead and he had a big mouth like mine and we share but he you could feel it from deep down inside of his soul if we got a piano player and we could get it in the right key, I guarantee you me and Daddy could ring, ring that one well together. But what will it be when we get over there and we see the face of Jesus? Everything that you faced in this world will mean nothing at all when you look upon his face. You know how thrilling it is to look at the face of a newborn baby or a new grandchild as soon as you get to hold them and all that? Can you imagine looking at Christ? Anyway, I'll hush. Love y'all. I get Her father never said hallelujah. He would say hallelujah. <laughs> That's a good memory to have, amen? Amen. I tell people all the time. There's good memories and sometimes it's not so good memories, but remember all of them. Have your Bibles tonight. I want to kind of do a little prelude to our revival that's coming up. Phillips family will be here Sunday night. We'll worship in song and hymn. And uh, Monday at 7 p.m. But we hope we can get a lot of folks in here. Pray about uh, asking family members and friends and co-workers. And uh, boy, let's help win some. Let's get them under the gospel. Now, the truth is about revival, uh, it's about those that's kind of on a low energy, so to speak. It's kind for that child of God that may have backslid, been out, been away. May be coming, but they're just, the heart is just not in the worship. And I think all of us have been there a time or two in our Christian life. 
I sat in the room with a family a couple of weeks ago, and uh, earthly things didn't look too good, didn't look like the person was going to survive, and the person didn't. And I felt the heartfelt for the family, the mate. And, uh, you know, I, I said to him, I said, I don't know when, but I know this one thing. God is a God that we can trust. And one day your sun will shine again. Amen. And sometimes we're overshadowed by the burdens of this world. We're overshadowed by the hurts and the disappointments of this world. Sometimes we're overshadowed by the burden of ministry. Sometimes we'll find ourselves just busy in the ministry and haven't stopped just to say thank you, Lord, you know. So the question is, is revival coming to my home? Will I experience a personal revival? Will revival come to the Parkway Free Old Baptist Church? Revival comes in the heart of each person, man, woman, boy, and girl. Revival doesn't come through the song service, although we love the singing service. Amen. Revival doesn't come through the preaching, although we love the preaching. Revival doesn't come through the fellowship, although we love the fellowship. Revival comes when man has knitted his heart to a loving God. He or she has confessed Christ, and they continue to confess Christ. I tell people all the time, you really don't have to put on a big show for revival and call in the big guns. It's when you and God gets together. We're doing the listening and he's doing the speaking. Amen? There's no interruption. Here, a people has been warned. The Jews have been warned from prophecy, the prophets, time in and time in and time out again. They would not listen. They would come for a while, and then they would turn to the pagan gods. They would come back, get right, and go right back to the idols again, as we see so many times. People, Tracy, uh, people want to have their own religion. You can have a religion, but it takes a little something special to have God. Amen. And why a lot of people want their religion? Because they set the rules, the boundaries, the standards. But there's one Lord tonight. Here in Psalms 85, if you're with me in Psalms 85, they've been in captivity for 70 years. The prophet Jeremiah reminded them that they would be released, but only a remnant of them would come back. And we're not sure if all of them that came back got right with God. But they did come back to their land, Josh. But the problem is when they came back, the land was destroyed. The buildings were destroyed. There was an overgrowth on the streets in this city. Basically what happened the Lord has warned them over and over. And although they came back, there was still a reconciliation was needed. A restoration was needed. A knitting together was needed. A revival, or to be revived, brought back, was needed. And I pastor long enough to understand and to know when people are not fully aware of how separated they are from God sometimes because of the lifestyles. They keep going back. In fact, the writer of Hebrews said they return to those old besetting sins. And there's a problem when we continue to return back to those old besetting sins or those sins that holds us. We 
we think that we have whooped them, but the truth is they're slowly whooping us in our sleep. There was a fellow I used to pastor many, many years ago. Didn't have him but a few years, and he was one of these guys, likable feller, loved the guy, but he was in, out, up, down, straddled the fence, rode the horse backwards, so to speak. <laughs> and I remember one Sunday he stood up to testify, and I'm, you know, I get it. And he says, I finally got God. And at the church, I went to him, I said, that's your problem. You're trying to get God. The solution is, is for God to get you. And when God gets you, you'll let go of those other gods. And you'll appreciate the true God. That's what revival will do to a church, Brother Jerry, amen? We're trying to hold it. We're, we're trying to... Man, I got a burden, I got a problem, but I'm going to handle it my way instead of just giving it to the Lord. But this small percentage returned. The land was desolate. There was a battle to rebuild. Well, I thought when Jesus forgives, he forgives. He does forgive. But yet sometimes there are those things that we have to be reconciled and things that we have to do to make things right too. Remember me telling you about the fella from the church and he got bored one day and stole Spartanburg City cop's car on Kennedy Street. <laughs> we go to his house all the time and talk to him. They finally shot the tires out. He wrecked, hit a power pole, went to jail, got out on bond, came to church. And he says, he stood up, you know, and he says, I'm confused here. They said I've got to go to court and go to, I'm probably going to go to jail. I thought when Jesus forgave me, he did forgive me. I said, he does forgive you of your sins, but Spartanburg City don't forgive you for stealing one of their cars. <laughs> and I think his brain was pickled, to be honest with you. That's not revival. Getting in trouble, then running to God, hoping to get out of it, that's not revival. Amen? That's saying, I'm sorry I got caught. <laughs> That's not revival. A true revival begins with the child of God. A time to move forward. A time to be blessed by the Lord. A, the time to come and, and to praise the Lord. Amen. I learned something a long time, Brother Jerry, as a pastor. You got to empty yourself before God. You got to come bent, broken, bankrupt knowing that you can't change anything. In fact, God may not want that situation to change at that time. See, these people are going to have to go back through a rebuilding process. The Bible talks about if a brother sin, then you go and you help that brother, and you help restore that brother. Rome wasn't built in what? A day. Psalms 85, Lord, thou hast been favorable unto thy land. Thou hast brought back. Now the Lord promised to bring them back, but he didn't promise to, they're going to have castles and cottages. No, they came with overgrowth. That land stood for 70 years, crumbled down. They were going to have to build it back up. Jerry, if something falls, doesn't mean that I have to continue to lay there. If we fall, it doesn't mean that we have to remain falling. Amen? It means we got to get up. We got to get busy. We got to open up the eye gate of our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ to begin to build in our lives. Verse 2. Thou hast forgiven the iniquity of thy people. Thou hast covered all their sin. I agree with that. Sister Carolyn and I, I got saved on Sunday night. I felt clean for the first time in my life. I mean, but I knew there was more to it than that. I knew that I had to go home, make some changes. I knew I had to set my heart on the church, the house of God, the word of God, the family. 
I knew all of that. I've been around long enough to knew there were some things that I had to do as well. I had to get some help from my pastor. I had to get ministered to. When I was out on the road, I would call for prayer. I found myself in revivals, and sometimes we just try to find things that will help us. But this is what I mean by we have to empty ourselves. God, I can't do it, but you can. Well, Lord, you know I'm trying to quit my habit, but I just keep circling around Krispy Kreme donut to find a parking space. Amen? Yeah, man, I went by there, and I'm addicted, but that red light was on, hot and ready. Baxter, that car pulled in there by itself. I, I, I tried not to, but, you know, <laughs> the right thing was to do was keep driving by. Oh, no. <laughs> not sure if that's a good analogy or not, but <laughs> there's some things we have to do. Verse 3, thou hast taken away all thy wrath. Now, we are saying, thank you, God. I'm no longer a sinner, Jerry. I don't have to die in my sins and go to a devil's hell because the, the blood has covered me. Amen. Now, he wants me to walk in the light of his fellowship. He wants me to be honest with him and to be truthful with him as well. <laughs> Folks, if you're not careful, you... you you can lie to yourself, you know. I know the doctor says I'm 50 pounds over, but I don't look it. Well, I tried to put them shorts on you wore at the beach last year. <laughs> Did you use hot water and dry them too hot? They shrunk. We're just lying to ourselves. You might as well go get the old man's stretchy pants now. Is that right, Eddie? Yes. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's all. And, so, and sometimes we lie to ourselves. Preacher, I'm okay. Man, you can't even stand up. I don't know about y'all, but I missed a clock restaurant. I was there one day with some fellas having some lunch, and a guy I knew, I've been to his house I don't know how many times. He saw me, he got up. He didn't walk like this, he walked like this. Hey! God called me to preach. I said, sit down before you fall in my soup. He's just lying to himself. I said, now, friend, I'm going to have to get you a ride home. I don't even know how you made it here. He's just lying to himself. And sometimes we just lie to ourselves like, well, Jesus understands. This is what he understands. <laughs> We're lost and we need a Savior, Amen. I get this all the time with, from people. It's okay. Now look with me in verse 4. Turn, you're going to see the word us, U-S, at least six times. Turn us. Those that came back. They may have come back, but all of them didn't get right with God. But there's a spokesman here, Brother Jerry. And he says, turn us, O God of our salvation, and cause thy anger towards us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thy anger to all generations? Will thou not revive? Will thou not bring back? Will thou not restore us? We're back in this community. We're back in, our, in, in this town. We fell, but we don't have to stay falling. Well, I sinned, so ain't no sense going to church. <laughs> I've heard that one. This is a goodie. I'm thinking it. I might well say it. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't. And if you do, don't pull me in your problems with your brother or sister in Christ. Well, you know they hurt me. I said, okay, get over it. Let's move on. Don't say it. Will thou not restore us? Will you not give us life again? 
that your people, thy people may rejoice in thee. Now, I've got a little problem with this verse. It's kind of like they're throwing it back on God. Well, Lord, if you'll revive me, I'll start back rejoicing. You let me sing Sunday night, I'll bring a sack of tape. <laughs> Maybe you don't see it in that textualized sentence there. I get it, understand. Will God forgive me? What did the Word of God say? What does 1 John 1, 9 say? If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just and to cleanse us from all sins. Amen. That's what He said, didn't He? Well, I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just too bad. God won't save me. He says, if you're revived, what did the psalmist David say in Psalms 51 and 7? That I, that, I, that I may hear that joy again. It was his prayer from Psalms 32 to Psalms 51. It's a long prayer. And he gets to this Psalms 51. He says, Lord, wash me, make me. I want to hear this joy again. That's repentance. He says, if you fall, you don't have to stay falling. Verse 7, show us thy mercy, O Lord, and grant us that salvation or the presence of the Lord. I will hear what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people. Amen. You notice he says, unto his people. And to his saints, but let them not turn again to what? we got to quit tripping and saying, well, it, everybody's doing it. They made me do it. I know, I know, but there was the opportunity but let them not turn again to their father. Listen, they kept going back to pagan worship, idol worship. When Moses went up, when he was called by the Lord, by the commandment, they were impatient people. What is the first thing they wanted to do? Make them a what? A God. Out of what? Gold. They made a golden what? I never ate there, but I ate at the golden corral. <laughs> a golden calf. Can you imagine people worshiping that? You don't have to imagine because it's 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 true. You don't see a lot of hamburger stands in India. They don't want you eating Uncle John. You know. It's almost like they're, they're putting everything on God. But let them not turn again to their folly. Surely his salvation is close or it's nigh to them. That does what? Fear him. That is a respectable fear. That glory may dwell in our land. In other words, begin to show and see the presence of God. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness, peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good. I don't know about you, but I'm looking for a good time. But Jerry, I'm looking for a time where we're broken. Amen. And we're just bent over and just broken before the Lord. Revival is more about having a hallelujah square dance. It might get quiet. I don't know. I know Austin Bullock. He's not quiet, but I'm saying the pews might get quiet. That's a sign for the preacher knowing he only got 10 minutes left. <laughs> 
<laughs> Cut the shoe off. <laughs> he got up in my corn patch. Revivals, we all get excited. Hey, you take a spell to run, come by and grab me, and I'll go with you. Right? If you run in the right direction. Not about leaping off this thing here. Stirring the crowd up. I believe sometimes that we need to really focus and hear from God. I'm not trying to kill revival before it starts. Revival will begin on that Sunday morning after the meeting. Amen? It'll begin in the hearts of the people each night and on that last night or that Thursday night. And it'll pick up or it'll stalemate come Sunday morning. Years ago, Boy, I can remember, I think our church went three or four months and you just knew that you was in revival with God. Amen. Verse 12. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good and our land shall yield her increase. Things are getting a little bit better here, Tracy. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the way of his what? His steps. So it's not about your steps, my steps. It's about the steps that he has laid out before us. A man may think that, that these are his steps, but they are the steps of God for revival. Let me give you three things quickly tonight about revival, things that we need to know. The prayer for revival is revival coming. We want revival, amen. You can't demand it. You have to surrender it. You have to surrender it. Number one, the information concerning revival. I then spoke about it's not the singers, although we some great people's going to be here. Amen. Hey, why? Let me just go ahead and throw this in as a free will Baptist pastor. Bring a good offering. Amen. Bring a good offering. We're going to pass the plates next week. You don't worry about dropping in that bucket out. Out, out there. But the right information concerning revival. Revival is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. And Brother Jerry, if there's no Holy Spirit, then we just showed up for a show, a clown show, a puppet show. If we don't allow, allow the Holy Spirit to do His job in our lives, we just say, I put cross ties across my heart, Holy Spirit. You're not welcome, Holy Spirit. There's some things in, uh, that I'm not sure about. There's some people that I'm mad at. And there's some things that I want to clear up. And I just say no to the Holy Spirit. I don't want to get saved this week. I don't want to repent this week, Holy Spirit. I want to do it my way. I want to go out of town and be a playboy. Huh? I want to get on the phone and cuss somebody out. I want my part. I'm going to take my drugs. Hey, you was with me a few minutes ago now. Come on. Preacher, won't you just go ahead and preach revival? I am. I wouldn't walk through them doors if they gave a free Cadillac. I would if it's red. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> revival is a time, Brother Josh, of our obedience to the Lord. Amen. It's not about how many shout outs. Oh, man, they just start doing exercises at revivals now. It's not about that. It's a time for the Spirit to work among the people. Not to have a new spirit, but a spirit. Uh, listen, Paul spoke to Brother Timothy in uh, chapter 2, verse 6 through 7. Talk about stir up that gift, stir up that flame. Maybe some of you grew up in a home, maybe your grandparents, they had that, you remember that coal stove, that wood stove in the middle of the house? Both my grandparents had it. They can go to bed at night. And as grandpa or grandmother would send us out to the wood house to get a bucket of wood, he was in there stoking that thing, crawling in around, getting them ashes hot. Never had to throw another match in there. But that thing lay kind of cool all night till you got to moving around. Before you know, man, you had a flame in that pot belly stove there. And we need to stoke that up to stir up the gift of God. What is the gift of God? 
is that one of those coffee mugs out there? No. Is it a Parkway for Old Baptist pen? Maybe it's just black tape up here, no. Bottle of water? No. The gift is the Holy Spirit. Amen. By the way, let me throw this in. You receive the Spirit when you get saved. Amen. The problem is sometimes we want to lay them here to the side. So we do our little thing. Uh-uh. We need to revive that flame to build back, to bridge back, to couple back, to hinge back, to stir it up, to free up. That's what's been laying for a while. Listen, we all sometimes may get a little stalemate, a little sluggish once in a while, spiritually sluggish. We just come and flop down on a pew. Bless me if you can, Jesus. Song didn't move you. Message didn't move you. We just got them cold ashes in our hearts. We haven't been with God in a long time. We haven't prayed. We, we haven't spoken to the Lord. I tell you what, look with me, Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Are we listening tonight? Amen. If we will open, if we will hear from God, the Laodicean church in Revelation chapter 3, verse 20, the verses before that says they were cold. It wasn't cold, nor they was hot. And the Spirit of the Lord says, we're going to speak you out of my mouth. But verse 20 brought a little revival to them, and he says, I'll come in and dine with you. I'll sup with you, and you sup with me. And sometimes our, our churches, Brother Jerry, can get cold. We don't mean to. We want to keep the flame alive. But look at me, Second Chronicles chapter 7, uh, verse 14. If my people, which are what? Called by my name. A name means something. Number one, if we want revival, we need to humble ourselves. Amen? You don't have to be the, the big dog in the cat yard. We need to humble ourselves. What's wrong with humility and meekness? What's wrong with uh, a, a man humbling himself before a holy God and saying, God, I can't do it, but God, you can do it. But you don't understand, all my friends are looking. All my family is looking. Everybody is depending on me. Everybody's watching me. Why don't you just tell them you can't do it, but God can. Amen. He says the humble, we don't have to be broad and, and, and bustly and ready to whip everybody. He says the humble yourself. Secondly, if we want revival, we need to do what? We need to pray. Thirdly, seek the face of God. Fourthly, turn from our wicked ways. Turn from those ways. Quit trying, listen, you don't fool me, you don't fool the one you're sitting next by. In fact, you don't even fool yourself. And how I know that, because you keep lying to yourself. Oh, I'll get better. Man, you've been saying that for 25 years. You're the most sickly person I've met in my life. You can't make yourself better. You go down to the gym and work out a little bit. That's okay. You get a haircut, clean up. That's good. Amen. We appreciate everybody taking a bath. Amen. Praise God. Hey. A little soap ain't never hurt anyone. But we, Tracy, we can't clean this up from here. You've got to give it to God. Will it happen in one night? I don't know. He says, you guys cannot come back. You've been in prison for 70 years. Has that taught you one thing? You have come back to a demolished city. of The overgrowth of weeds. The building has crumbled. Somebody's got to pick it up. Somebody's got to build it back up, Brother Jerry. He said, you've got to be reconciled. It is Christ through the blood of Christ that has reconciled us to our 
Heavenly Father. Amen. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked way, then, then will I hear from heaven. And will do what? Bake them a cake? No. Forgive their what? Oh, Lord, you ain't supposed to use that word no more. Oh, the liberal preachers are taking that out of their notes. He says, what? Let me make sure I got this right. I do have some new glasses. Their sin, and we'll do what? Boy, you're talking about a harvest. Amen? We're talking about a harvest now. Secondly, not only we need that right information about revival, that's the Holy Spirit. Don't show up without the Holy Spirit. <laughs> We're to show up humble, seeking, praying, desiring the attention of the Lord. Secondly, there must be the realization. The realization. Verse 4, truly us, O God, of our salvation, and cause thy anger towards us to cease. Will thou be angry with us forever? Will thou draw out thy anger to all generations? What is needed here? What it is that we need to realize, Sister Janice, that we need to repent. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with repentance. That's between you and God. That's something that you go to God about. There's no sense just to continue to carry that, that burden, that, that weight. There must be that awakening. Listen, we own it, we confess it. We don't revive dead men. Verse 6 says, what? Will thou not revive? You can't revive a dead man. But you sure can revive one that's on life support. Amen. Two major things that we need to realize. Number one, prayer find myself praying more and more these days. He gave them the solution here in Psalms 85. You may have fallen, but you don't have to stay down. I don't know who told the church that God won't forgive. The Bible says he will forgive. That lie came from the pits of hell. Satan himself. You're not good enough. You're not nice enough. You're, hey, you're not pretty enough. You don't have the kind of clothes like brother or sister got. You live on that side of the town. You shop at Aldi's. I do too sometimes. Listen, I, I'm just being honest. It don't take much for the devil to persuade some people about things. Because they don't have. You know what my mother used to tell us? And if we did it, she'd beat us half to death. She always wanted to leave just enough for father to finish. You better not make fun of those kids. You better not make fun of those kids, what they got on. And I'm thinking, I'm worried about them making fun of me. <laughs> I said it low, Jim. I didn't say it out loud. Mother had a good right backhand. She ought to have been a tennis player. But the devil put that in people's minds, Jerry. I've been told that before. Oh, preacher, I, I'm not good enough to come to your church. It's not my church. It's the body of Christ. It's where we come. Secondly, he uses the word fearless. It is being fearless in the face of the enemy. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world. Now, Satan is, is a powerful devil. You and I should never invite him for a fist fight. Amen? But we recognize there's a devil. The Bible does. I'm not a super spiritual hero, I can tell you that right now. But God is. Fearless. I'll stand for what's right, God. Amen. 
thoroughly the expectations of revival. You know, there's been people all week could have made up their mind whether they're going to be here tonight or not. They started on Sunday night or Monday, took out their excuse book, and went down the line. Oh, I haven't used number 10 in a long time. Let me try that one. Oh, wait a minute, I did. I forgot that pastor came by the house, so let me go on down about excuse 14. Listen, you'll never win if you don't get off the couch and get on the race line. Amen? You'll never finish the course if you don't endure, but Paul said to Timothy, as endure as a good soldier of Christ. You'll never be a good farmer if you don't plant in fertile soil. We got to get up, amen. I'm talking about revival that could change our homes, our lives, our church, our community, our family. All of us got loved ones that are lost. We've been talking to them for years. There must be the expectation of revival. Will revival come? That's the clarion call. Faith won't bring revival, ladies and gentlemen. But the Spirit of God will. Faith. Sometimes we misuse that great word, that action. People used to say, well, they died because they didn't have enough faith. I said, no, they died because they got hit by that Mack truck. I used to run some of the most spiritual people in my life. It's coming, it's, it's believing, it is desiring. Many, many years, probably 10 years or more, uh, we went through a little something, and for four months I fought that battle. I mean, four months. Then we had revival set up, and on that Wednesday night, I made my way to the altar. The, the, the message spoke to my heart, the Spirit of God spoke to my heart, and I'm telling you, I came up a different man because we needed to be honest with God. Amen. Because we expect it, expect it, the Spirit of the Lord to touch us. Amen. Now, don't expect the Lord to do great and mighty works if you're not willing to build back up. You can go down 85 from here to Greenville and see new 100,000, 200, 300,000 buildings that are being put up and some's already. But the only problem with it, they got to, if you're interested, call us for this building. <laughs> you can lease this building. It's just an empty, multi-million or billion dollar building with nothing in it. Nothing I hope you catch that analogy here. <laughs> you can have a pretty building, but nothing's in it. You say, hey, is anybody at home? <laughs> There's nothing in it. And we ought to expect, not demand, but believing in thine own heart that God has raised his son from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Amen. And we can believe that. So, this is what you need to do next week. Number one, you need to come hungry, spiritually hungry. <laughs> We're going to, Natalia and her staff is going to have a, a meal for us Monday through Thursday. Come hungry and thirsty. Be like that beatitude, Sermon on the Mount. Hunger and, and, and thirst for the Word of God. Come faithful. Well, the preacher expected me to be here, so let me get up and put my clothes on and go on. Yeah, I'm expecting you to be here. Well, thank God you're putting your clothes on. Amen. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Come eagerly. Come ready. Let me throw this in here. Just tell the coach that little Billy Bob won't be there next week. Uh, preacher, you tell him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Can't make the dance class. Now, you'll have to make that decision up. I can't tell you that. But 
have a high expectation. Come willingly, come seeking, come hearing, come giving, come believing. Revival is for the dying church. Oh, preacher, you're saying we're dead? No. Trying to prevent it. Amen. I don't know about you, but this is a big old world, and this big old world's got a big old whip. And it's been whipping a lot of people here lately. And it drives them to run from reality when in fact you're going to turn around and reality is going to smack you right in the face. The Bible says in John 14, 15 and 16, talks about, you can stand with me, talks about the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus said to his disciples, I'll not leave you comfortless, for I will send a comfort just like it. In other words, you'll never be an orphan. You'll never be an orphan. Let's pray for the lost. Let's pray for the sick, the helpless, the hopeless, the sinner. Pray for yourself. The Lord said here that he would speak peace to his people. You can't just show up and expect nothing. That's what he's telling them when they came back. Seventy years captivity. There was a reason why he left that place desolate like that. And the principle is that we've got to pick ourselves up. Not only by ourselves, but we've got to trust God. Amen? We've got to trust the Lord. It won't get done by itself. Grass won't get cut because you pull up and say, man, this grass needs cutting. You know? That wall won't paint itself unless I get the bucket and the brush out. Staying away from God won't solve a problem. Giving up those dead excuses won't solve a problem. Sitting at home with the milly mouth won't solve a problem. Flip and run out. You know, woe is me. Gee, y'all better get all that fixed for next week. <laughs> if I have to get a shovel and a wheelbarrow, <laughs> we're going to do that. Pray for the Phillips. We love them so much. They are genuine. Amen. The Rogers family, they love Jesus. Pray for that family. They'll be with us for two nights. And our special guest for Wednesday and Thursday is the Parkway Church. Amen. We'll start working on this right here. All right. Pray for Brother Austin Bullock and his wife, Jalen. Uh, he's a young man. I, I was, it was my honor to help prep him and minister to him as a young preacher. When he comes to the ordaining council, I got to school him and not only me, but other pastors got to spend a lot of time with Al, uh, with Brother Austin, and uh, he's a fine, fine young man, just in his mid twenties, and uh, so he's a. But he's a. The Lord has called him. He's doing a good job at the Salem Free Will Baptist Church in Salem, North Carolina, and uh, but put him on your prayer list this week. Thank you. Let's bow our heads, Father. Thank you for this time, Lord. How we desire revival, God. We need revival just to remind us and to help us and protect us. For this is a big old world. And Father, we can span out any time. There's so many things that's offered to our young families now and to our kids and our teenagers and grandchildren that pulls them further and further away from the cross. God, we need to come closer to thee tonight, Father. Thank you for each one that's here tonight. Thank you for the youth workers we continue to pray for those, Lord, that's on a trip this week, praying for their safety to return. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Thank you so much for coming.